The Nigerian Ports Authority has restored the Apapa Waterworks facility that has been out of use since 2012. The facility serves the seaport community with 2.4 million gallons of water per day, if Unaya Eze reports. For over a decade, the Apapa Port operating environment has been without water, owing to the dilapidated water facility. The restoration of the 2.4 million gallons per day facility by the Nigerian Post Authority has brought huge relief to the port community. Commissioning the newly renovated water project, the managing director of the Nigerian Post Authority, Mohamed Belokoko, explained that the restoration of the water facility was a matter of priority considering its importance to the operating environment. As an organization whose operation is dependent on water, we are committed to contributing our quota to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal number six, which is to ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all, which is very much in harmony with our dedication to the welfare of people living and working in the vicinity of our ports. Responding to the existential needs of our operating environment is strong priority to our corporate social responsibility agenda. The Apapa local government chairperson and other officials of the Lagos state government who were present at the occasion commended the gesture of the Nigerian Post Authority management. They assured of the proper maintenance of the facility to ensure sustainability. They have handed over back to water, uh, the Lagos State Water Corporation who will be maintaining it and they will do all that is necessary to ensure that it is in good working order and they are pumping clean water to the residents of our papa. Continuous monitoring of its performance and the implementation of necessary improvements will ensure that it consistently meets and surpasses the evolving needs of the Apapa community. We express our sincere appreciation to the Nigerian Ports Authority for their invaluable support in rehabilitating critical components of the treatment plan. In addition, the Nigerian Ports Authority management team was also applauded for the recent rehabilitation of the accident and emergency ward at the Apapa General Hospital and the acquisition and deployment of a first-of-its-kind incinerator in Africa for efficient waste management. Ifunanya Eze, TVC News, Lagos. Global stocks were poised to end this week lower today as investors bet on interest rates remaining higher for longer to suppress inflation, helping to lift the dollar and send oil tumbling. Eurozone government bond yields fell over news that the German business activity slowed in June. While French business activity is contracted this month for the first time in five months, in Asia, Japan's core consumer inflation exceeds forecast in May. The MSCI stock index was down 0.38% and up 1.6% for the week. Though still up 11.5% for the year in Europe, the stock 600 index was down slightly and set to end the week lower. S&P 500 features were down 0.4%. The Bank of England raised interest rates by half of a percentage points. BOE Monetary Policy Committee voted 7-2 to two to raise interest rates to 5%, from 4.5%, its highest since 2008, uh, of, uh, and the uh, largest rate increase since February, following stickier inflation and wage growth. Economists expect a move to 4.75%, although financial markets have seen a 50% chance of a rise to 5% following higher than expected inflation data. MPC explains that the second round effects in domestic price and wage developments generated by external cost shocks are likely to take longer to unwind than they did to emerge. The Turkish lira weakened as much as 2.8% to a fresh record low today, extending losses at the central bank's high, uh, high rates, reversing President Naive Dogan's policy. The lira last traded at 25.20, a 1.3% weaker than 25.59 yesterday's close. Turkey's central bank raised its key rate by 650 basis points to 15%, saying it will go further in the first meeting under Governor, uh, Governor Hafiz Gaye Ekin. The move marked a change in course after years of monetary easing in which the 
One week repo rate was cut to 8.5% from 19% in 2021 despite soaring inflation. Analyst estimates rates to rise to 21%, explaining that the smaller move suggests Governor Act, uh, Aiken's limited rate hike are to aggressively tackle inflation. And following Parliament's approval in Canada requiring internet giants to pay news publishers, Meta Platform Incorporated plans to end access to news on Facebook and Instagram for all users in the country. The legislation known as the Online News Act was approved by the Senate's upper chamber and will become law after receiving royal assent from the Governor General. The Act outlines rules to first platforms such as Facebook and Alphabet's Google uh, to negotiate commercial deals and pay news publishers for their content, a step similar to a groundbreaking law passed in Australia in 2021. Online News Act was proposed after complaints from Canada's media industry, which wants tighter regulations of tech companies to prevent them from pushing new businesses out of the online advertising market. And crude oil prices dropped for a second day today and was heading for a weekly decline as the UK interest rates hike added to concerns of our economic growth that outweighed lower US crude stocks and other signs of tighter supplies. US West Texas Intermediate Crude experienced a downward price review of 1.45% to sell at $68.50 per barrel. Brent also sells at $73.18 with a decline of 1.29%. Bonnie Light also recorded a downward price margin of 3.43% to sell at $73.82. And for the OPEC basket, crude dealers are offering $77.24 with an upsurge of 0.51%.